Hi, today we're going to look at setting up a simple maze game with character movement and moving through multiple rooms within a game. As part of that, we need to look at one of the basic programming structures, selection. So let's start off with our little character here. We've got some movement set up and we want to be able to get to the exit. However, if we have a basic keyboard event to move left and right, you can see it's really tricky to actually fit perfectly through, even though I know my sprites are the right size. I set up my sprites to be 64 by 64 pixels. My wall is the same. And within my room, I changed the room properties so it actually snaps to a 64 by 64 grid. This also meant that I needed to change the width and height of my room so I had an even number of walls and you just cut it off halfway through. So how can we fix this movement? In my Explorer object here, you can see my keyboard events set up. Now what that does, it just starts moving. It doesn't really matter where it is. What we can do is in the control tab, we can actually set up a check grid. So we can actually test to see if our character is within a certain spot before we start moving them. So if we drag that, this actually has to come before our start moving in a direction action. Because it says, if the instance of the Explorer is aligned with the grid, we don't want it to be 16, we want it to be a 64 by 64 grid. If that is the case, then and only then we can start moving. This is a basic example of an if-then programming sequence. We have an action only occurring if another action is fulfilled or if a certain criteria is fulfilled. If it's not aligned with the grid, it's not going to move anywhere. So we have to actually add this into all of our keyboard events. We can do it manually or we can actually copy this and paste it into each of these. You can see I can change the order. However, if I do that, this is not going to do anything at all. It's going to move regardless of, with, uh, regardless of whether it's aligned with my 64 by 64 grid. So the order of actions is really important. So now I should be able to fit very easily through the gap. I've actually gotten stuck, which is really, really interesting. I can't move anywhere. Let's figure out why. If we go into our Explorer object, we've got some precise collision checking. And if we have a look at modify mask, this is actually the collision mask that we can set up to make our maze game easier. If we change it to the um, actually not the full image, we want a rectangle. And this will actually collide then in this entire square or rectangle here to avoid getting stuck. You do this in a maze game, but you wouldn't necessarily do it in other types of games. See, now I can't possibly get any closer. If I can't get stuck, I exit doesn't do anything yet. So, we have our first level. When we reach this exit point, we want to be able to transition into the second level. How do we do that? Create a collision event. We can either do this between our explorer and our exit object or the other way around. Doesn't really matter. Let's do it in the explorer because that's what we've got here. What do we want to happen? In the main one tab, we've got an option for rooms. Previous, nope, next, looks good. Go to the next room, add a transition if you like. And to make this process very quick, I'm actually going to place our explorer nice and close just to test it so I don't have to go through the maze each time. 
Okay. Also, we're in the second room. Fatal error. Okay, I wanted this to happen. Fatal errors or errors are really, really useful. They tell, tell you exactly what has gone wrong and where. It says in the first action, action number one, for the collision event with the exit and the explorer. The, what is the error? Moving to next room after the last room. So we've told it when it touches the, collides with the exit object, we want to go to the next room, but it doesn't exist. So how are we going to fix that? What do we want to happen when we finish the last room? Well, we probably want a high score table to show. We might want to restart the game. We might want to give the option for the user to start the game again. Any of those kinds of things. So this isn't enough. What we actually need to do is check to see if a room exists before moving to the next room. So here, check next. If I drag that above, if the next room exists, go to it. Otherwise, we want something else to happen. So in the control tab, we have an else block. So if the next room doesn't exist, whatever actions we put after here will occur. So this is at the end of the game. And I can place a comment in here to explain that really well. A comment um, is something that doesn't affect the gameplay. It's not an action. It's not an event. It's just something we can use as programmers to be able to add readability to our code um, and to be able to debug it very easily later on. So if reached end of game. Put this up here. What do we want to happen? Now probably in the score, show the high score table and end the game or restart the game perhaps. Okay, first level, second level. Awesome, we don't have any score to add. When we close that, it should restart the game exactly as we expected. So, there you have it.